Here's a Zenith radio that I'm using. It's a FM only tube radio. And this is the diagram, our circuit drawing. And this is the discriminator circuit. We're going to take a much closer look at that. And I'm going to redraw the discriminator using solid state diodes. But before I do that, let's take a look at the 10.7 megahertz IF intermediate frequency carrier. And I can do that from this point right here. Hi, this is Ashley from Visiting Angels. Caring for a loved one can be both mentally and physically exhausting. Call Visiting Angels. We can assist with those everyday tasks like bathing, dressing, errands, meal preparation, and companionship. Our Visiting Angels caregivers become part of the family so your loved one feels comfortable and you have peace of mind. For a free assessment, call 919-787-4000. This is the 10.7 megahertz IF carrier and as we look at this you don't really see a whole lot if you look closely at the top and bottom peaks you can see that there is some movement but it's really hard to tell what's going on but as the top peak uh, moves down the bottom peaks move up and I'll give a demonstration of this in a little bit. But this movement is where the audio information is. And this is what the discriminator picks Stand off of line for free. this Visit signal. Visit spectral.com slash work to lock in this deal now. Learn more at spectral.com slash work. Restrictions apply. Service is not available in all areas. When it comes to choosing a health plan, you can trust the members who have experienced it firsthand. Humana is proud to offer a Medicare Advantage plan in North Carolina that earned five out of five stars. Five stars is the highest rating possible. It's based on real members' experiences, and it's decided by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Our Humana Gold Plus HMO. This is an IF can with uh, two high Q tune circuits on the primary side which is on the left I have an input of a carrier and on the right which is the output I've got the oscilloscope and we're going to take a look at what happens when we have this at resident frequency and when I move it off of resident frequency, either on the low side or the high side. Okay, here's a carrier that's going in one side of that IF. And on the other side, I've got the scope, which is what we're seeing here. And we saw in the video this you know, kind of bouncing up and down in the video. And what I'm doing now is I'm changing the frequency on the frequency generator. And, you know, we saw, you know, a little bit, little bit of that. It's hard to, hard to do, but, uh, where the information is in FM, let me get this so we can see the carrier in proportion to audio, since the carrier is so much higher. Here, this highly tuned circuit, very high Q, when I move off residence just a little bit you can see that starts to go down now I'm going in the uh, 
lower direction and frequency. Okay, now here we're back at the top, or at residence, I should say. And now when I go up in frequency, it starts to drop. So on the high side, or on the low side, you can see that the whole carrier, not just part of it, but the whole carrier goes up and down. That's where the audio information is. Also, what I want to point out is, notice when it goes down, the bottom comes up. This is the center line right here. We've got the same above and below. Here I'm going down in frequency. We're at residence going up in frequency. So the audio is changing. This from residence just a little bit. But what's important to see here is that we have the same energy above as we have below. So if we rectify it, we don't have that. If we try to use this, we end up with zero. So, let's take a look at that discriminator circuit and see what it does with this type of signal. This is the discriminator circuit, the center tube, and this center tube has two diodes. And I am going to redraw this discriminator using only the diodes, the solid state diodes, because it will be much easier to understand what this circuit is doing. This is the circuit. You can see it looks a lot different, but it's identically, electrically the same. And what's going on here is the output from the tube that's on the left goes over to the primary of the IF can. And of course, magnetically couples that information to the secondary. But as you saw in the video, there's not much deflection, so we need more help. And if you take a look at this connection right here, it also goes over to, the, to a center tap between two capacitors in the secondary. And what this does at the point where it connects to the primary, it all, that primary also acts like a choke. So there's some energy there that is not getting through, and that's what this wire does. It lets more energy pass through, and this energy goes through those two picofarad capacitors, adding to the audio information. Here's how we pick up both halves of the audio signal. When the top of the secondary is positive and the bottom is negative, the top diode conducts. And here's the path for this part of the audio. It's from ground through the top diode, through the coil, down through the 150 k ohm resistor, 100 k ohm resistor over to the volume control. Now the second half is when the top of 
the secondary is negative and the bottom is positive. Now the top diode is not conducting. We just have a path from ground through the 150 k ohm resistor, then through the coil, and now down through the other diode that is now conducting and through the 100 k ohm resistor and then over to the volume control. Now we have both halves of the audio signal. But as it's going down, we have a Pi filter here. And what this does is this strips off the RF, the 10.7 megahertz carrier. So when it gets through this filter, we now have just audio that is going to the volume control and then up to the audio amplifier circuits. Thanks for watching.